All the Java programs we've wrote so far share this common trait. When we run them multiple times, they give the exact same output. And sometimes we might want variety within our program's output. Now we will learn how to accept input from the user, which will allow our program to output different answers each time it's run. So in order to do this, we must first import something called the scanner in line one or before the class at least. Basically import java.util.scanner, make sure you do it outside of the class. This is the only time in this level we're doing stuff outside the class. And now in order to accept user input, we must first create a scanner and we can name it anything we want. So I'll just name it input and then equals new scanner system.in. And don't worry about what this means yet. Just remember new scanner system.in. And then afterward, we're ready for user input. So obviously in order to accept input from the user properly, we would, we should probably prompt the user for something. So print enter an integer. And then afterward we can take in an integer. And the way we do that is the name of the scanner in this case input and then dot next int and that takes an int as the name suggests. So then in this case, enter an integer five. And now we might not want the five to be on the next line. And in that case, we just do system.op.print, enter an integer, and now enter an integer five. So then we can do stuff with this. So for example, system.op.print, enter two integers. Then let's just say int a equals input dot next int int b equals input dot next int. And now we can do system dot out dot print ln a plus b equals a plus b. And then we have right here, enter two integers, five, seven, five plus seven equals 12. Or we could do enter two integers, five space seven, then five plus seven is 12. So any two integers separated by either a new line or a space of some kind will be treated as two different integers or tokens. So here's an exercise, prompt the user for an integer, say n1 and print the first n1 positive integers. So for this one, we do system.out.print enter an integer and then int n1 equals input.next int then for int i equals one, i is less than or equal to n one, i plus plus, print i, which basically prints the first n one positive integers, as shown below. Enter an integer four, one, two, three, four. Now you may be wondering, what happens if the user deliberately or accidentally enters something invalid? So for example, 4.5, well, that's clearly not an integer. So what happens? Well, in this case, we get something called an input mismatch exception because well, we're asking for an int right here, but then we're getting a double or in this case, QWERTY, which is a string, which is not allowed. So basically you have to rely on the user to enter the valid thing. Now, of course, if we can only accept ints, things can get boring. Fortunately, we can accept other things. So these are the list of things you can accept. Int, 
next int. So scanner name dot next int. Double next double. And then a word which is or token which is basically a string with no spaces is just next and a line is next line and next line as you'll see soon is dangerous to use and should be used with caution and finally the last useful one is next long which accepts the long and here's an example prompt the user for two words and print them in reverse order so the way we do this is well print enter two words and words by words I mean like any string that doesn't contain spaces can contain numbers characters could be QWERTY could be random jumbled up mash of letters and basically the way we do this now is string word one equals input dot next and string word two equals input dot next and then the reverse order print word two and then word one as shown below enter two words that and that and then there and by the way numbers are also words so like one two three five six seven yeah because numbers are technically strings when entered this way as well they can also be interpreted as numbers but in this case they're interpreted as strings because input.next here are a few exercises so the first one prompt the user for two integers and print their product first of all we need to print enter to integers then int i1 equals input dot next int and then int i2 equals input dot next int then we print their product and in this case i'm just printing i1 times i2 equals I1 times I2 and then as shown below 5 7 5 times 7 is 35 next exercise prompt the user for an integer n then prompt the user for n integers and print their sum so for this one enter an integer then int n equals input dot next int then now we need a for loop because we need to prompt the user for n integers and there's two ways to do this one is to prompt them one by one and another is just to say first enter n integers since they can just separate it with spaces and then afterward use a for loop to accept n integers from the user So int u equals input dot next int. And now we need to print their sum, which means we need to keep track of the sum variable. And then sum plus equals u. So then we print their sum. As shown below. Enter an integer. 7. Enter seven integers, three, five, four, two, eight, one, negative five. And then their sum is 18. Next exercise, 
Repeatedly prompt the user for an integer until it is from 0 to 100 inclusive. So for this one, we have to use a loop because it says repeatedly prompt the user for an integer. And this time, I'll just use a while loop, while true, and then rely on a break statement. So basically, enter an integer from 0 to 100, and then int u equals input dot next int and then if u is greater than or equal to zero and u is less than or equal to 100 then i break and otherwise i continue the loop then when i run the program i get when i enter 103 enter an integer from 0 to 100, enter negative 57, repeatedly prompts me for one until I enter an integer from 0 to 100, say 57. Then we're done. Next exercise, prompt the user for an integer n, then prompt the user for n words, then print every other word starting with the first word. So this one's actually trickier because what you think initially will work actually won't work, or at least won't work the way you want it to. So prompt the user for an integer n. Enter an integer. Int n equals input.nextint. Then afterward, prompt the user for n words. Int i equals 0, i is less than n, i plus plus, so basically n words. And actually, I can prompt the user for n words just like this because words are separated by spaces. Enter n words. And then afterward, string word equals input.next. And then afterward, hey, we, why not just do if I percent to is zero because starting with the first word which is really when i equals zero so if i percent to is zero then i print word so what could possibly go wrong with that well actually a lot of things enter an integer well seven a b c d e f g a c e g so that works however what won't work is if i do this Enter an integer 7, enter 7 words, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then all of a sudden that happens, A, C, E, G. And in some places, like online Java compilers, this just won't work at all. So the way you fix this is actually you keep track of a string result starting with the empty string, then if I percent to is zero, so if we want to print it, we just add it to the result. Result plus equals word and a space. Then afterward, I just print the result. And when we run it separately, say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, it'll still do it properly. Now you will see why next line is dangerous. So if we do just system.auth.print enter anything and then string line equals input.nextline and then print you entered line. So there's nothing wrong with this alone. Enter anything, QWERTY, you entered QWERTY. Enter anything, QWERTY, UIOP, you entered QWERTY, UIOP. So that's no, there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with this is if we do anything before it. So for example, let's just say, enter a word, and then string word equals input.next, and then print you entered word. So then what happens is enter a word, QWERTY, enter 
You entered QWERTY. Enter anything. You entered blank. So what's wrong with that? Well, basically, next line is reading the rest of this line. So that's not what you want because the rest of this line is nothing. And what you really want is the user to enter something else. So in general, when using next line, if anything other than next line is immediately before next line, then you must perform an additional next line beforehand. So for example, input.next line, and now it'll work properly. Enter a word, QWERTY. You entered QWERTY or NT or anything, QWERTY ASDF. And you entered QWERTY ASDF, it works now. And note that this only applies if you do something that's not next line immediately before you do next line. So let's just say I copy this thing again. This time it's okay, assuming we change the variable name because, well, enter a word Q, you entered Q, enter anything QW, enter anything QW. Basically what's happening is that this input.next line is the thing before that, so we're safe because we already finished the line right here. So then we can start this line and we're good.